So welcome everybody. This is a new human experience podcast. And this evening is July the 31st, 2020. It's the last day of July and also the last day that I'm talking about the um, on the subject of relationships because uh, all of July I've been talking about different kinds of relationships. I've talked about our relationship with ourselves, with our families, with our romantic partners. And now we come back to really about relationships as a whole in, in the general. And uh, first, I just actually want to confess, make a confession that, you know, let's put it out there in that relationships really is not my strong suit let me put it that way i'm not the worst at it however i'm definitely not the best at it there there are definitely a lot more people that is is much more comfortable at creating strong robust and um relationships than i can however um for me Looking at relationships is really, I look at relationships from the point of view of spirituality. Um, because um, really, if you, if, you look, if you look at it, everything is, is um, actually, everything is relationships. And um, from a spiritual point of view, if, if Looking at, at it, relationships from the uh, spiritual point of view is really looking at our relationship um, with the spiritual part of ourselves. However, I also want to, to take a second look at what relationships really is. It's because when we... Um, when we come into this this world, when we when we incarnate um, on Earth, or even before that, um, but let's start with that now. For from a humanistic point of view, when we in incarnate on on Earth, we actually um, to be we are actually separated. We that's why a lot of us. Um, with relationships is really not easy for any of us to, to relationships does not come to us easily even though everything is about relationships um the first the first day we open our eyes even before we open our eyes when we are within our mother's womb we are in relationship with our mother and there is of course also the the the, the father as well um, but maybe not always as I would say, not always as um, not I wouldn't say significant, but it's not always as close. It's because we uh, the first months of our life we spent within the, the the womb of our mother. That's why our relationship with our mother is really the the the, the first most intimate relationship we we are going to have. And then after that, um, it's when we um, come out from our mother's womb. It's we are all of a sudden, um, I would say pushed into this new environment where we where we're not um, we're no longer whole, I should say. Um, whole in the sense that uh, um, being holistic kind of whole because we, um, when we are in our mother's womb, food is supplied to us, everything we need in order to survive is provided. Whereas once we come out, then um, there is this element of being separated from our environment because when we're in our mother's um, womb then our environment is just or everything is um, contained within the the this little sack that that has that care that is um, surrounding our body and when we come out we kind of just it's very um, symbolically and also significantly there is this this sense of being separate from our environment, and um, and so 
unless we we are um, we know from birth who we truly are um, from a spiritual point of view um, we know who we are however very few of us has that inner knowing that we are actually source and we come to earth to have an experience very very few, few of us perhaps um, somebody like franco or some other i would say some other ascended masters maybe they had that experience however the vast majority of the rest of us don't we begin our our spiritual journey by not knowing not remembering who we are and so we struggle with this um, being separated, the sense of separation. And so that's why I mean when I said that relationships is actually everything. It's also spirituality as well because um, relationships really includes everything. Whether our, how we are um, in relationship with our environment, that in itself is very spiritual because we actually are one with our environment even though we it looks like we have separate we are separate but energetically speaking we are one with our environment there is nothing outside of us it only looks that way it only um it's only because we forgot that who we are is not this body who we are is way beyond and and encompass everything who we are is actually the um the world everything within this world is a part of who we are and mm, most of us don't remember that we have no idea and so we learn, we start to relearn and remember that by relationships. When we start to find ways to overcome the sense of separation, when we start to, to um, I would say, reclaim the relationships, the true relationships that with our environment the true relationship which is that there is no separation everything is just all one and any um idea that is it's other than that it's simply a a force um identity so that's why relationships is so important and is such a great learning teaching and experience, um, experiencely rich subject. It's because that's, that's the way we start to learn and remember how to become one again, because that's how we learn to be in, I, I, I'm trying to say the, the, the right relationship, but I think, don't think the right relationship is the, the right word. It's just that I, I should say to be in the um, optimal relationship. I think it's, it's a better expression. It's not really right in that right implies that there is a wrong way to be in relationship. There, there really is no wrong way to be in relationships. Whatever relationship that we had with our parents, whether it's whether we enjoy their company or not, it's still the right relationship because we as spirit pick that relationship so that it's it's a creation, it's our creation. We created that relationship in order for our soul to learn. And so um as we learn that okay this kind of relationship with our parents is not it's not the most optimum and as we become more mature and we start to um, let go of the need to have other people treat us a certain way and we start to relax and be able to truly relate to other people um, whether it is our our most um, I would say intimate relationships with our um, partners with our romantic partners with our business partners with our family with our most beloved friends when we start to learn how to be in relationship with um, someone that seems to be outside of us 
and we start to remember that it is um, it's actually there is no one outside of us and that really is what relationship is there to teach us is to remember who we truly are and start to remember that everything is our creation the the relationship we have with our family with the, our life situation even with the world, how we relate to the world. Do we like the world that we live in now? And do we like the, um, the, our neighbors? Do we like our work? Do we like our government? Do we like anything? That is, that's, that is really, um, if you look at that and you start to realize that anything, any relationship that we struggle with, we are actually, um, we need to start to, to remember that it's all that the struggle, even though it, may, it seems like it's outside, we're struggling with someone or something outside. However, it is truly the, the struggle is within because if you truly understand that everything is our creation, our relationship with our um, government is our is our creation our relationship with not wanting to let's say something as simple as not wanting to put a mask on while we we go out our relationship with that with complying with what the the social um socially acceptable or so socially um, promoted behavior is that really is our creation as well. And if we have some, any kind of struggle, then we are actually struggling with our own creation. And, and there really is no shortcut to it, is that when we are struggling with something outside, we are actually struggling because we, we forgot that we created that we on some level agree to have this experience and um and it's not that we have no choice of course we always have a choice we always have a choice and the choice is not to not necessarily to um argue with someone else that you know i'm right you're wrong it's not necessarily that although sometimes it may be they may feel like that is the case. There, there are actually many um, ways, especially as we move along, as we move out of this inverted 3D environment and start to go back into um, like the natural organic 3D. And also as we go into higher dimensions, this what really has changed is is this relationship with our environment because um, the natural organic 3D actually oneness is part of it. It's, it's something that is, when I say part of it, is that it's an, it's an underlying idea that most people will start to accept. I think most of us are not there yet. Most of us are still thinking as a um, an adversarial relationship with our environment and the more we start to let go of needing things to look a certain way and start to um, as we start to fight what's outside and start to really ask the, the the difficult question of okay how this is the way that um, it is right now so what is the best way what is the optimal way for me to engage with my environment in order to um, get my desired result because um, there is there's always a way of being co-creating and also to um, to speak your opinion and hold your ground without being confrontational. Because when you when you push, you would 
experience pushback. However, if you um, stand your ground, but without pushing, without needing to be right, when you, when you can um, find the right balance, then the, you will be able to find the, the optimal relationship with your environment. And that's when life starts to become easier because you're no longer having to fight your environment. You're actually um, asking the question how to relate with your environment and be okay with the environment you know, as it is to, to really accept what it is right now. And then also without giving up hope that there is always a way to work with the, your environment in order to, to um, put your agenda forward without um, having to fight the environment. And I'm not saying that this is going to be um, easy. I'm just saying that there is always a way. And when we can become flexible and when we can let go of the... the, the the fight when we can, it's, it's like what um, Buddha, I would say one of the, the, the saying that I heard that is being um, attributed to a, a Buddha saying is that when you can put down your knife, then you can become Buddha right on the spot. It is when you can stop fighting your environment and really understand that you and your environment are one and the same. They are all parts of your creation because it's your creation. So you can always find a way to create it the way you want it, the, to finesse your environment in the way that you can have your cake and eat it too. That's what I'm trying to say. So um, let me just see, have I missed out anything? Oh, okay. Um, I also want to um, talk about something is that um, a lot of the reason why we, we feel that we have to fight our environment is this sense of, um, this core sense of I am not enough. And if you, um, it's been, I would say if you look at every time you um, have a sense that you're fighting something or that you are, um, I would say, doing an uphill battle, that you're going uphill, if you look deep enough, you would know that there is, there is this sense that I am not enough. Maybe not in exactly those words. It could be something, uh, some sort of variation. It could be that I'm not good enough, or it could be that I am not um, worthy, or maybe it could be that I'm not perfect, or something like that. But in general, it will be a variation of I am not enough. Somehow, I am not enough. That's why I'm having these difficulties. And it's been said that this, this sense of I am not enough is really our core wound as human beings, is our core wound. And I've heard it being, um, I would say, a few of my, the few of my um, more respected um, people that I respected had, had talked about this this core wound, and I would like to talk a little bit more about that, is that when I really reflect on this, this core wound or, or supposedly core wound and, and the, um, the general, um, I would say, the general remedy, the way to, to counteract this is to really let go of that that belief and start to embrace the opposite, which is that I am enough. And it's been said that, yes, when you feel that you are enough, then you don't need to, 
you don't need to fight. You don't need to be nasty to other people in order to elevate yourself. And so it's actually, when I think about it, um, it's not really, I would say, it's not really that simple. It's not that simple because when we, um, I am not enough is something that is always there. Because every time you want to manifest something, you are actually on some level saying that whatever it is that um, I'm experiencing now is not what I want. And so, so this sense of I am not enough is always reinforced and reinforced. And the opposite of, okay, so how, how, what about if we get to the point where we have no desire, then we would become in, enough because there's nothing that we desire. So that's why it's the, um, like Buddhists, some of the, I would say, not really, not necessarily just Buddhists, but Taoism talks a little bit about this as well, is to have no desire, is to actually go the opposite. Is when, when you desire nothing, then um, you get out of that, that, um, I would say that core wound of I am not enough. However, it's, it's not as simple as that as well, because it is, it is not our nature to have no desire. There is always some desire. We will always want something. What we want may not be materialistic. It may be spiritual. We may want to know ourselves. How, however, wanting to know ourselves better, wanting spirituality, it's still a wanting. It's still um, at some, on some level, reinforce this I am not enough. My spirituality, the, the, my level of spirituality is not enough. So it's another way of looking at it is that it's, it's the, the fact that we're not enough is not the problem. It's not really the, the real problem. It is how we deal with this I am, the sense of I am not enough. Because when we feel that, okay, I am not enough because I don't have you know, the, the, the perfect body or I don't have the um, million dollar house or I don't have you know, the, the, the 10 best friends or um, I don't have whatever it is that you desire. It's not about um, if I don't have that, then I'm not enough. It's not about that. It's about how you think of, it's your relationship to accepting that, yes, you're not enough. It is, it is true that we are not enough. It is actually true that we are not enough because we are only one aspect of source. Um, as long as we are on this exploration of getting to know who we are, then we, we're following this breadcrumb of who we are. As long as we are on that journey, we will never be enough because we are moving, um, we are not in oneness yet. As long as we are not in oneness, we will not be enough. As long as we um, have not gone back to the, 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 the ultimate oneness creator, as long as we are on this journey of exploration, then our experience will always be not enough because that is the structure. As long as we are not enough, we will keep on wanting to create. This is really the impetus 
that is really the, the drive underneath our creator nature. We are creator. If everything is enough, we, there would be no charge. There would be no excitement in creating. It isn't so um, feeling a sense of not enough is, is not a bad thing. It's actually part of the reason that we are a creator. We become a creator. We want to manifest. It's because of that. It's because we know it's not enough because that is the journey. The journey is to keep creating something new, to keep exploring, to keep um, wanting to find out more. So this sense of not enough is is part of the structure of being a creator. So the only thing wrong with this is our relationship with I am not enough. If we think that I am not enough is a bad thing, if we have judgment about it, then that's what makes it um, a wound. Whereas if we accept that I'm not enough, that's why I'm given the ability to create something so that I can have a different experience and go on and on and on until such point as we explored everything and we, all of us, all souls, come back into one, to just one, the creator source. Until then, then all of this would start to, um, all creation would stop. There will be no more creation and we will go back to the nothingness of oneness until we go back to there. And unless we go there, this sense of I am not enough will always be there in the background. So it is really to, to look at this I am not enough and how do I find the right relationship and to create the right relationship with my environment, with the people around me, with the, um, the, my relationship with the world so that I can start to create, co-create something that is going to take all of us to the next level. That really is the gift, is the blessing of I am not enough. So I think that's, that's really something that um, when, I, when I looked at it of this, um, what really is sabotaging our relationship is the sense of I am not enough. And the sense of I am not enough, it's, um, that's why we want to, that's why our relationship with our environment with our parents, with our friends, and with our um, romantic partners can become crazy, can become dysfunctional. It's because we have the, um, we feel this, I am not enough, and we're trying to fix it. We think, we think that it is the wrong thing to do, the wrong thing to to, to feel. That's why we try to not feel that. We're trying to feel that I am enough and we miss the, um, the blessing of this I am not enough because I am not enough is also the, the genius or I should say is also, is also the, the reason why we have to go out why we have to go out of ourselves to create and remake our relationship and explore the relationships with our environment, with the people around us, so that we can start to co-create in a very different way. And so that is also part of the, the excitement of going into organic 3D and also going into organic 5D, the fifth dimension, is that we will start to explore this relationship with oneness, is that we start to recognize that we're not enough because we're not, we, because um, 
we don't recognize that we are one yet. And when we start to recognize the oneness, then we'll start to become, to start to um, have a new relationship of this sense of something lacking in our life because there is something lacking in our in our life because we are not just single we are not just this this one body we're actually everything as well so i think that's really all that i would like to say about relationship and also that um i'm really excited and 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 um looking forward to exploring more about relationships and really exploring more about how to create a different relationship with our um, environment with the the co-creators around us how do we learn a new way to relate with one another not from hurt not from thinking that I'm not enough and that's not okay and I don't want to feel that way. So I'm trying to, you know, put up this, this, this mask that I am enough or this, this forced persona to, so that other people would look at me and believe that I, I believe I'm enough. Because that's not really what um, it's going to create endearing relationship. It's exactly the opposite is that is when we be, can become vulnerable and really um, let other people know that, yes, I'm, I'm not enough and I need help. And um, this is what I need help with. How can we work together so that we can find a way to make this life better, not just for me, but for everyone else? How can we co-create in order to make that and that reality to is to really co-create from this i would say space of being okay to be vulnerable okay to be not enough okay to explore that there is so much more we don't know about who we are and that we don't need to to um to know everything and control everything. It's okay to not know. It's okay to incorporate other people's idea that I don't know everything, that my way um, maybe has worked for me, but going forward though, we have to be able to find different ways of creating um, reality so that it will work for everyone, not just for some people or a few people, but it has to work for everyone. And that's really all of the exploration that we're going into when we go into organic 3D and organic 5D. And it's so inspiring to be able to step more and more into that. So this is uh, all that I have to say for now on this topic of relationship and this is my take of when we look into the mirror the mirror looks back so how do we create this relationship with ourselves that um that allows us to be vulnerable and also powerful at the same time <laughs>